Do you want to build a 1440p gaming PC, but you don't have a lot of money to spend? This PC right here for $800 can play at 1440p, comes with an awesome upgrade path, and does so while also looking really good for the price. Before we show you guys how to build it and talk more about it, let's hear a word from today's sponsor. $800 is a great budget for a mid-range gaming computer, and if you're looking to maximize your performance for the price, buying used parts is a no-brainer. One of our favorite sites for deal hunting that you need to check out is Jawa.gg. Jawa is an online community-driven marketplace where gamers buy and sell their gear at amazing prices. For example, if you head over to the GPU section, you can see that it's full of solid deals. And the best part is you can shop with confidence knowing that Jawa has your back. And maybe you're not completely sold on the idea of building a PC yourself. The good news is that Jawa even has pre-built gaming PCs for sale. They have a pre-vetted list of verified sellers that are selling working, high-quality systems at amazing prices to ensure there's no price gouging. If you're interested in learning more about the number one place to buy and sell gaming computers, GPUs, consoles, and all your gear, head over to Jawa.gg today or check out the links in the description down below. Big thanks to Jawa for sponsoring today's video. Now, let's get back to it. For the CPU, we're going with the Ryzen 5 7500F. This CPU is an AM5 processor that is a five nanometer technology on the Zen 4 architecture. It has six cores and 12 threads at a base frequency of 3.7 gigahertz and a boost all the way up to five gigahertz. It only uses 65 watts. It has DDR5, 5200 megahertz support and 38 megabytes of L2 and L3 cache. These are great CPUs because they perform just like the Ryzen 5 7600, but only at $150. And the reason we went with the 7500F is because we think it is one of the best bang for bucks in order to get into AM5 platform and DDR5 memory. So for the motherboard, we went with the B650M D3HP. And what we really like about these motherboards is not just the price, but also the fact that we have four lanes for RAM, we have two four pins for the CPU, we have a PCIe 16 by four, and we also have a PCIe one X as well for even more expansion. We also have one covered M.2 slot that actually has a heat sink and we have an extra M.2 for it later on storage expansion. And to touch on that DDR5 RAM, that's exactly what we went with. Some Team Group T-Create Classic 32 gigs at 5600 megahertz. We always try to find good RAM that has some heat sinks on it as well because RAM does get pretty hot, especially in gaming and other demanding tasks. We also like this RAM because we've had really good luck with getting it to the true 5600 megahertz overclocked speed. Now, of course, this RAM doesn't have any RGB. You can always spend the extra if you want, but we decided to be cost effective with this. And speaking of the motherboard having that Gen 4 support, we had to go with the Crucial P3 Plus NVMe SSD. The reason we love these drives is they're the fastest in the market. When it comes to editing, rendering, accessing your games, really just doing any task, it's really good to have a good Gen 4 SSD that has respectable speeds. It has a read speed of up to 5,000 megabytes per second, a write speed of 3,600 megabytes per second. And another thing you got to respect about these drives is they're typically in the $60 to $75 price range. So the Ryzen 7500F does not come with a cooler and that's why we went with the ID cooling SC 214 XT this is a tower cooler that comes in around the $20 price point it's mostly all black so it's pretty stealthy but you got ARGB this is a true ARGB three pin header meaning you can plug it straight into the motherboard or if you have an ARGB hub you can plug it into there as well so that all of your fans and LEDs match and don't be fooled by this cooler's cheap price it actually can support something like a 7700X from AMD it can support something like an i7 12700K we've actually used it for many different CPUs. And another thing that I like about it is it supports all the way back from 1156 up to LGA 1700 as well as AM4 and AM5. And of course the fan is removable if you want to swap the fan out but they also have a non ARGB version as well that's just all black. So now that we have a completed motherboard I'm going to hand you guys over to Matt so that he can talk about the rest of the build. Now to make up the rest of the build we have the case, power supply, and GPU left. Now let's go in depth with this power supply. This right here is the Segotep 650 watt 80 plus gold power supply. It's 650 watts and it's a power supply we use a ton at PC Bros, our PC selling business. In all honesty, I really like this power supply because one, it has black sleeve cables, which make a build look really clean. I don't have to worry about that ugly ketchup and mustard design for most budget power supplies. And also it has plenty of watts for the current configuration we're going with and rooms for upgrades in the future. Now, one downside is this power supply does have a ton of extra cables you don't need because it is a non-modular power supply, but it doesn't really matter that much when we have a case that has a ton of room to cable manage in. Now you don't need 650 watts for the PC build we're currently planning today. It really is an overall very power efficient build. You could get away with 500 watts, but when you're building a PC at this price range and we have the flexibility with $800 to spend, we really like to get a 
little bit more wattage so you can do easy upgrades in the future. And speaking of the case that we're gonna be putting this build into, this is the Zalman M4, which is a really awesome MicroTX case at $69. It comes with four ARGB fans pre-installed, a nice mesh front panel for great ventilation. We also love seeing the trend in budget cases of having these swing out tempered glass side panels, which makes the build just look that much more premium at only $69. And also it has plenty of room for our MicroTX board and good cable management in the back. But all in all, it's a really awesome case for $69. We really love the sub $100 case market right now, especially in the micro ATX territory. And Zalman is definitely leading the way when it comes to those builds. Now the last and most important part of a gaming PC build is obviously the graphics card. Right here, we have the XFX Speed Quick 308 RX 7600. It can be had for anywhere between $230 or 260 bucks. We play 260 for our graphics card right here. It does come with eight gigabytes of GDR6 memory. And also with FSR2 and FSR3 coming to the market, AMD GPUs are more powerful than ever, especially at this budget sector. We think this AMD combo of the 7600 and 7500F is a really good sub $1,000 combo that honestly, most gamers don't need much more than, especially if you're diving into 1080p high refresh rate or even entry level 1440p gaming. Now, for those who are really worried about VRAM, because that is a big topic in the PC market nowadays, you could opt for something like the 6700 XD with 12 gigs of VRAM that gives you a little bit more buffer for 1440p in newer titles. But in reality for this build and going all new parts right now, we think the 7600 is the best option for this price range. So there you have it. This is our awesome $800 gaming PC all put together and ready to go. We think this combo is gonna be great for 1080p and 1440p gaming, but you know what? We've talked a lot in this video. Let's just go ahead and show you guys what this thing is capable of in the latest titles. And now that we put this $800 gaming PC together, the benchmarks honestly speak for themselves. At 1440p, we're getting really good results. In games like The Finals, 1440p high settings with FSR set to balance with no ray tracing, 144 plus FPS. Apex Legends, 1440p high settings, 100 plus FPS. Warzone with FSR 3 set to balance at 1440p, 120 plus FPS. Along with Cyberpunk, a really demanding game, 1440p high settings with no FSR, we are one FPS close from a 60 FPS average on high settings. And of course, we have our 3D Mark Time Spy score, which ended up with a score of 10,569. All in all, for $800, being on the game at 1440p is really impressive, and the combo of the RX 7600 and Ryzen 5 7500F makes this incredibly easy to do so. So as you guys can see, this PC is totally 1440p ready. We tested it in many titles and got great results. We'd love to know in the comments section down below if you guys like this new style of video. And if you want to build this PC yourself, check those links in the description down below. They will be affiliate links. They will help us out. Let us know what you think of this $800 PC because I think for the money, it looks great, performs great. And with that upgrade path, it's really hard to pass up. And as always, we hope you guys enjoyed today's video. If you did, check out our other two YouTube channels and also our twitch.tv slash Toasty Bros. And do not forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And we'll see you guys in the next one. Bye bye now, if you want a PC built just like this by the pros, you should check out PCBros.tech. PC building isn't for everyone, and that's why PC Bros exists for those who want to just buy something ready to go with a one-year warranty, and you can save some money by using code TOASTYBROS2 on checkout to save 2%. See you guys later. Goodbye.